Today we're going to be tearing down this Honda B-Series engine to see what's inside and how it works. And the B-Series of engines were one of the very first Honda engines to have VTEC or variable timing and electronic control to vary the lift inside of the camshafts to get more power. Now this particular engine is a B18A which is out of a 1990 Honda Integra. It's a 1.8 liter 4 cylinder engine but this one does not have VTEC. Unfortunately no, the owner of this engine probably thought it had VTEC and hit it a little too hard. You can see it made a little inspection port over on this side of the engine. Moreover on this side of the engine it actually made a giant window where you can see inside the engine this here is actually your crankshaft journal obviously the engine is completely locked up because the internals are messed up so this is going to be an interesting teardown taking a look at the layout of this engine you got to remember that the front of this engine here actually faced the driver's side of the vehicle which means that this intake side here would be where the firewall is located over here we have a timing belt under this cover that drives a water pump you have a coolant bypass over here an oil separator here and the oil filter around this side here the valve cover is made of metal it's an aluminum head on an aluminum aluminum block of course we have that inspection hole that's hidden directly where the AC compressor would bolt up to so it's not really obvious that this engine was blown we're going to begin tear down this engine by removing the valve cover a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts going all the way around all right, I'm going to go ahead and lift that valve cover off now taking a look underneath that valve cover things are pretty simple there is an oil baffle inside of here for where your PCV would hook up down here and that's pretty much it valve cover is pretty strong and heavy actually taking a look under the valve cover you can see we have a double overhead cam design the intake being on this side and the exhaust being over on this side they're both driven off of a timing belt from the crankshaft now this engine is very basic in that it uses just a cam that pushes down on a rocker arm and that's going to push down on the valve further down below now this doesn't have a VTEC system but you can clearly see that there would be a space for another set of cams over here that would push these valves further Further down when you engage those rocker arms. I got another video on how VTEC works so you might want to check that out. Now I did find a little bit of coolant in the oil that I drained out so I have a feeling that coolant mixed with oil and that's what caused this engine to fail hence why some of the parts here are rusty. Let's knock off the upper timing cover. I'm going to remove these engine mount brackets. So while the motor is still locked up I'm going to knock off these cam bolts. This is before they used washers that were integrated on bolts. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get this timing belt off. Okay. Now while the engine is still kind of locked up, I'm gonna see if I can try to get this crank bolt out. All right, let's give it a shot. Oh. Again, this washer is separated. Yes. I'm gonna remove this lower timing cover next. All right, we'll pop off that cover. It looks like the timing belt's coming with it. Taking a look at the timing belt setup on this engine, it's very simple. You have the crankshaft here at the bottom. Over here, you have the timing belt tensioner. There's a bolt that goes in here, and that's a spring-loaded tensioner. There's no hydraulic tensioner on this one. And then you have the water pump, and then it drives the two overhead camshafts. Very simple and reliable, although you do have to do a timing belt change at some point. All right, now we can pop the crank gear off. <sighs> Here we are. And underneath this plate here is the front crank seal. Now inside of this housing here is the integrated oil pump that's driven off of the crankshaft. Just gonna remove this engine mount here. Get that out of the way. Dang, well this is heavy. They made them engine mounts out of iron. I'm gonna pull off these cam gears. And pull off this timing cover. Alright, next up I'm going to remove all the bolts that hold the water pump on. There we go. That's what the water pump looks like. You can see they've actually put some RTV on that when they did the last pump replacement. All right, I'm gonna remove this bracket so that we can have a closer look at the inspection window. So many little brackets on these old engines. Wow, look at that hole. I can actually fit my gun inside of that hole. Taking a look at the back of the engine here, you can see we have our thermostat housing and some lines that'll go to the heater core. We also got this big hunk here, which is actually an oil separator. And what this does is it ventilates vapors from inside the crankcase and sends it back up into the intake system to get recirculated. It's just some giant baffles inside of there. Just gonna zip off these thermostat bolts. And there we have the thermostat and the thermostat housing. All right, next I'm going to remove the bolts to hold this to the block. And now I can remove the entire bypass hose assembly and thermostat housing. And what I do notice is that I don't see a plug or a port where the coolant temperature sensor would normally sit. So it probably sits somewhere else in the coolant circuit. Never mind, the coolant temp sensor sits right here into the head. All right, in order to get the head bolts out, I need to remove the cam shaft. So I'm going to start by removing all these cam bearings. I wonder how bad these are. Not too bad. There we are. 
Seems like all the cam bearings didn't suffer too much wear. So maybe the head on this one is salvageable. Now taking a look under the camshafts here, you can see this doesn't really use a standard roller rocker arm system. It just has rocker arms itself. There's no real pivot point for them. Now this ball over here is going to sit inside of this socket here and that's going to pivot it up and down as a ball socket. And the camshaft is going to touch this part and this part here is what's going to push down on the valve itself. Now with most Hondas you can see that these valves are adjustable and you will have to do a valve adjustment once things start to wear out by loosening up this bolt here and bringing it down. I'll just go ahead and collect all of these guys here. Now one thing that separates Honda engines from Toyota engines are these same roller rocker arms. It just adds a little bit more complexity to the engine. The Toyota engines would tend to use a camshaft that acts directly down on the valve itself, which would neglect all of these pieces here and make it a lot simpler. However, these Honda engines are still pretty reliable even with these pieces in the way. Now really what rocker arms do is they multiply the amount of force and or the stroke that the valve can be pushed down with. Now looking under the head here, you can see you have regular hex bolts for the head bolts. They're not triple square, they're not hex, they're not even 12 point sockets, they're just regular 14 millimeter head bolts. Haven't seen that on an engine in a long time. Usually there's some special socket. All right, well let's see how tight these head bolts are. Yeah, they're on there pretty tight. Ugh. At least it's not like a German engine Ugh. where you can take them out with a hand ratchet. Ugh. Go ahead and zip off these bolts. All right, now I'm gonna remove the head. Now a four cylinder engine is supposed to operate in pairs, so when these two are in the up position, these two would be in the down position. Obviously this one is mischievous and is the one that caused the inspection hole, and I bet it probably has some damage from bending the valve. It's got quite a lot of carbon buildup though. You can see there's so much dust and flakes inside of here. Let's turn this engine over and get the bottom end apart. Alright, let's see if we're going to make mess. There's not that much of stuff in here at all. All right, taking a look at the bottom here. We do have a stamped steel oil pan. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these two braces for the bell housing. So many brackets in this engine. Of course, it's a Honda, so the whole entire thing's covered in oil. I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the 10 millimeter bolts that hold this oil pan on. Okay, let's get this oil pan off. Ooh, it's pretty heavy. Oh boy. <laughs> There's spare parts in here. You got some shrapnel in here. That looks like a piece of connecting rod. A bunch of pieces of the, that's a connecting rod cap. Pieces of the piston. This is gonna be a pretty nasty one. All right, check this out. This here is where the oil pickup tube would be. And you can see there's lots of shrapnel that was sucked into the engine and probably starved it of oil. There's a bolt head, probably from the connecting rod cap. This is just chunks and pieces of stuff hidden all over this oil baffle here. Look at all that. This thing completely grenaded itself. I don't think there's any rebuilding of this engine. Gonna remove the oil pickup. You can see inside the oil pickup tube, there's a lot of crap inside of there too, blocking the way. So that could have helped to starve this engine of oil. All right, next up, we're going to remove this oil baffle here. I'll just remove this oil pan gasket. It seems like this was replaced at some point. If this was 30 years old, it'd be so brittle. Okay, let's remove this baffle here. And turning that over, you can see the damage that it caused in this oil baffle here. That piston must have punched down through this oil pan baffle and then again through the block to create that inspection window. Gonna look under here, you can see we've got more chunks of the piston and connecting rod. A lot of smaller chunks in here. Now taking a look at the crankshaft itself, you can see that it's completely black on this piston here that's missing. The connecting rod is completely blown out to smithereens and this area is black, indicating that it overheated and starved from oil. Okay, so I'm gonna start on the easy side here and remove these 12 millimeter connecting rod caps okay let's remove that yeah you can see this one definitely overheated as well now that's what piston number four looks like away from the damaged side the piston is completely rusted indicating the presence that it was soaking in water and the wrist pin is so stiff I can't even move it so someone definitely tried to hit VTEC in a non VTEC motor here's piston number three and piston number two you can see that these have been discolored from overheating and here's what the connecting rod bearings look like under those caps this is what you call roadkill. I killed this piston and there's blood dripping out. And there's also fragments of stuff inside of the piston head here. Alright, now I'm going to try to hammer what's left of piston number one, which is the one that's completely mangled. Well, there's what's left of your wrist pin for piston number one. And that's all that's left, the piston head on the top. Everything else completely damaged and mangled up. Looks like these ones were made out of aluminum. Alright, we're going to take off the front oil pump here. You can see it's integrated into this housing. And I'll take off the rear main seal. Always got to make sure you get these bolts before you mount it on the engine stand. Now the crankshaft has five main bearing caps and they're held on by these steel two bolt main caps here. They don't use a four or six bolt design. 
like some other engines do. These are 14 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna go ahead and crack them loose so we can get this crankshaft out. All right, let's pin these bolts off. Let's get that main bearing off. Wow, look at that. Main bearing is pretty much mangled up. Most of the time when rod bearings spin, the main bearings don't really get carved up too much, but this one's got quite a bit of damage. Yeah, number two didn't fare better either. Okay, I think it gets better as we move down. This is number three. Yeah, and four or five were not as bad either. Okay, now the crankshaft should be free to be removed. Oh. So with everything completely stripped down, we're gonna take this off the engine stand so we can have a closer look at some of the components. So we've got all the components laid out here. We're going to take a look at what's inside. Now keep in mind as we take apart this B-Series, this was actually a very strong and reliable engine. Throughout the 90s, people used to build them and race them in the Integras and the Civics. And this was actually the predecessor to the K-Series which came in the 2000s. Now as we start at the bottom here, we do have a stamped steel oil pan and this pickup tube is going to sit at the bottom there to suck up oil. Now most of the destruction you see here is all just due to neglect. Now all that oil is going to be sucked up to this oil pump over here which is directly driven off of the crankshaft. Now in the K-Series, for example, there's a chain that goes down to the bottom here that drives a separate oil pump located down inside the oil pan. Of course this design is going to be a little bit more reliable because you don't got chains and tensioners and extra parts moving around. Now that oil is going to be sucked in through here the pump is going to create fluid flow and push it through the output port over here where it's going to go into the block and of course at the bottom here you have your pressure release valve. Now the oil from the oil pump is going to feed oil into this oil galley over here over to the oil filter which is what's going to filter out any crap and particles that you supposedly have lying around in your engine. Now, I took off this oil filter and I don't notice any any particles inside of here this filter actually looks fairly clean on the inside so I bet someone was trying to do a last-minute job when they found out this engine ran out of oil now looking at this design here you can see once the oil is filtered out there is a galley that runs along the block over here and then over to the back side here that's actually going to lubricate all of your main cap bearings and your crankshaft connecting rod bearings there's also another main oil galley that comes up to the top here to feed the head now the top here we do have oil return ports which is what's going to draw the oil from the head back down into the sub to be recirculated now, looking down underneath the block here, here you can see that main oil galley that runs along the length of the block and the main bearings are actually drilled down and tap into that oil in order to lubricate the crankshaft and connecting rod. Now one good thing with engines from back in the day is that these oil galleys are actually accessible when you want to rebuild the engine. You just unbolt this and clean everything out. They're not sealed off with any pressed in balls or a welded over cap. Now if we take a look at the crankshaft, you can see we've got our typical four cylinder iron crankshaft here. Now I did find some coolant in the oil pan and when coolant and oil mix, they don't lubricate very well. Now when that lack of lubrication reaches this crankshaft here we've got our main bearings that feed our connecting rod bearings which are arguably going to be hotter and they're near to the combustion chamber. This is going to overheat and that's why this area is completely black and darkened up because this bearing completely disintegrated itself. Now moreover when this bearing is completely overheated and cannot get any more oil this little hole here is supposed to squirt oil up at the wrist pin here to keep it well lubricated. This is supposed to rotate and that's why you can see for the remaining three cylinders there was no oil getting up to those wrist pins and they're completely seized up. Now of course what happened over here is you got so much friction and heat going on something's got to give and that's when your connecting rod completely decides to disintegrate because it's trying to push against friction and blow the engine and that's how you end up with this destruction. Now typically the connecting rod which is facing so much heat is what's going to explode first and when it explodes it pushes out of the block and that's how you end up with this absolute mess inside of the block here you can see there's complete destruction where that connecting rod made contact with the block on this side and made an entire window for itself to shoot out of the block over on this side. Now obviously this is less common with iron blocks because they're going to hold up a lot stronger but this block is pretty much garbage and cannot be saved. Also take a look inside of the cylinder liners you can see that they really didn't run this thing with oil and most of the pistons were pretty much seized up anyways. Just kind of sad though that such a nice engine can't even be rebuilt or put back on the road. Taking a look underneath the head here you can see that there's all this crust here and that's probably due to the coolant buildup that was in the combustion chamber. Now the head gasket used here is a multi-layer steel gasket but I don't see any point here where it looks like it could have been compromised. Now however underneath this head here this is the piston that blew I can see that these valves are slightly bent because I can actually put something behind here and they don't sit flush. Now the oil feed on the block is going to feed the head down at the bottom here and then you can see that the oil feed is going to come in through this head bolt hole over here and then go out to each of these channels inside of here. Now the oil channels that run along this head here are going to individually feed each camshaft bearing. You can see that there's holes here that are drilled for it that's going to bring that oil here to lubricate the top end. Now obviously this is the poor man model who got his Integra as a hand-me-down in high school because it ain't got no VTEC bro. Alright let's see if we can take a look at what those valves look like. There's your valve spring. There you are. Other valve spring. 
Yeah, these definitely look like they're bent, but I don't really see any point where the piston actually hit it, so it probably did a light damage. By the way, these valves actually feel pretty meaty and very heavy compared to other engines I felt. Now I remember when it was cool to run an Integra like this in high school days, but kids, if you don't want your engine to end up with bent valves like this one, or a connecting rod bearing on your crankshaft like this one, or a grenaded piston like this, or a big inspection window in your engine, Make sure you check your oil frequently, especially if your engine does not have VTEC on the valve cover. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.